chapter 1. And uh, just for a few minutes, I'll, I'll just talk to us. Uh, just for a few minutes. I'll try to talk. I'm not, I'm not preach. But uh, just for, you know, for, for the thought of mine, you know, it's really, you know, the God that we serve is so great and so strong and so almighty. You know, that's what we've been pulling on and carrying that word almighty. You know, how can you serve? How can you believe in a, a God and not believe in the power of that God? Uh, there is nothing impossible for the God that we serve. Uh, he's almighty. He's not a sometime God. And, uh, you know, people will challenge you on your faith and who he is. And uh, he, he is a now God. Uh, the God that we serve is not a God that uh, the God of old. He's a God in the now. And he's doing things now. He's manifesting now. He, he wants to show himself so great in this time. But he's showing himself in spurts. And the season that we're going into, he wants all of his children to demonstrate who he is uh, in this earth realm. And all of us have that capability. Amen. Some of you don't have it because you don't believe it. See, some of you think only the pastor has it. But the Bible, my Bible tells me, and it's, that, it's one of my favorite scriptures. Great is he that's in me than he that's in the world. So all of y'all that's in the world, take away my title and I'm still great because he's inside of me. When Jesus, the holy child, the one unto us, unto me, has been given a child. Oh, you understand what I'm saying? And so when I understand he's been given to me, that means he's been given for me, given to me for me to do something, to demonstrate, and the most more, more than likely to represent who he is. And all of us has the, we all of us have that capability uh, to demonstrate who he is. But I think some of us say, "Who me? Not me. I'm too young. I'm too old. I don't have the money. I don't have this. I, I didn't have a visitation. He didn't talk to me in the dream. He didn't talk to me in the sleep." Nobody prophesied to me. See, you got it all twisted. If you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you accept him into your heart, then you have that same power. You have that same capability. You have that same uh, in me, that into it to raise the dead, to cast out devils, to heal the sick. It's not just because you got a title or because you want to dress up and put a bow tie on and just look like you're important. No, it has nothing to do with that. But you have to have that revelation of who he is. And there's no greater scripture of knowing the power of God, then understanding how Mary was able to conceive the Almighty. And so as we just think about um, the birth of Jesus Christ, you can't even acknowledge God without knowing, wait a minute, I serve a supernatural God. I serve an all-powerful God. Everybody say he's supernatural. How can you believe in Jesus Christ being born and not believe in a supernatural God? The whole childbirth thing was supernatural. You can't even explain it. And I don't even have time to explain it. I don't even want to battle with the explanation. All I know was, once I was blind, now I can see. All I know was, once I was lost, now I'm found. And I made a choice and a decision to believe in an un, a, a unnormal situation of a child being born of a virgin. And when we think about that, you know, it, it has nothing to do with Christmas trees, lights. It don't even have nothing to do with, with three kings. But we like to focus on the three kings. It's greater than the star. We're talking about the almighty coming from heaven to earth. We're talking about the kingdom of God invading earth. Mary was earth in the raw. Not necessarily walking the earth, but she was the earth. What were we created from? In the beginning, God created man and woman. And he took man and formed him from the what? The earth, the dust. And so when you think about it, God was gracious enough to allow a holy vessel to partake in an a, a un, a unclean thing. Can you imagine that? Amen. So let's read it and let's talk about it. And then I'll just talk about it and then we can go eat some pork chops or something. I don't know. I don't eat pork chops, but chicken wings or something. Luke, Luke chapter 1, verse 26, and it says, now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth. Now I'm just going to stop, and so I won't try not to get excited 
But when I just read that and I look at the story, you know, we, we rush over that. But this is the importance of this text because it says now. Everybody say now. So when is now? And so we read the Bible from a historical perspective, but you need to read the Bible in the now. Everything that God wants to do in your life is now, not what he did. Yeah, they crossed the Red Sea, but now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel, the angel, the angel Gabriel, Gabriel was very important. Gabriel wasn't just some angel, but he was the angel. Are y'all with me? Now it says the angel Gabriel was sent, was sent by God. And it's very important that you get this. We are moving in a time that God is dispatching angels at your request. Because you need to make your requests known unto God. You have not because you ask not. And there's a lot of things that we miss by default because we don't know that there are angels. They're waiting to be dispatched. See, we love to be touched by an angel, but y'all need to get the revelation of, be, of sending an angel. I don't need an angel to touch me. I need an angel to go on my behalf. And there are a lot of things that we're moving into in this day and age. Yes, you need the Father. Yes, you need the Son. And you definitely need the Holy Spirit. Don't get it twisted. You got to have the Trinity to be able to access anything you want from God. But some of us got to get a revelation that angels don't have. They are on our assignment on your behalf. And just like this, why did God give us all of these details concerning the birth of his son? Because he wants to let you know that I want to dispatch angels on your behalf. And some of you just be looking at me funny and you want to go work on jobs and you want to stress yourself out you want to make yourself sick but when we serve a supernatural God tell me why won't he send an angel on your behalf to get something you've been looking for to get something you've been expecting to declare why did I just stand up I didn't I didn't I didn't beg you to get me chairs I sent some angels to say okay wherever it is whoever they are these chairs might not mean nothing to nobody in this room but me but there are some angels moving on my behalf to obtain something because the God that I serve is supernatural and he's now. The God that I serve is not working for next week or working for tomorrow. He's working for now. The God that I'm expecting to move. I'm trying to talk to you. The God that I'm expecting some things for in 2014 says you got to stretch your faith beyond what you're able to comprehend. And why we have a hard time because we've never seen angels. And if you've seen an angel, you're too bamboozled and too confused to say you got some work that you got to do for me. But I'm so crazy right now that I'm looking for God to do something in my life. Not get me some tennis shoes not get me a car but do some stuff that I can say nobody but God not 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 something that you can get cured with a NyQuil bottle but I'm something talking about I'm talking about the last of the last of the last I got a friend named Carter Eve he got another report two days ago about getting cancer and he thought this was over this is his third bout but I said God there are some angels that's been assigned to Carter's life and I said I'm gonna pray I'm gonna believe but I'm believing that this is the son of God this is a child of the most high God and so God if you sent it for Mary why you can't send it for Carter why you can't send it for Jermaine? Why you can't send it for Nicole? Why you can't send it for the believer that said, I'm going to trust God with everything in my Noah, everything in my spirit, man. See, when you send an angel to go forth on your behalf, it's a spiritual thing. It's not a mental thing. When you lay your reasoning down and stop thinking about how God going to do it and say, God, you got a thousand angels that can move. Listen, if one can take a, how many to flight? A thousand and two can take how many to flight? 10,000, you think that's done because you're cute? You think that's done because you're quoting scriptures? You think that's done because you know the word? No, that's done because God is sending angels, and he's sending angels to move on your behalf. Now, you may not understand this, but you got to really, you can't just desire to see angels. You got to desire to send angels. See, I don't care about what they look like. I don't care about if they white, they got blonde hair. I don't care about if they got wings. As long as they are holy angels and not demonic angels. Because see, the devil every day is sending demonic angels to and fro to see who he can devour because he wants to kill, steal, and destroy. But until you get a revelation that God got more angels than the angels that have fallen that are waiting for you to send them on an assignment, until you get an understanding that God is supernatural and you got to stop trying to figure it out 
with your church self and your religious self, how he going to do it? I don't know how he's going to do it. I'm not, it's not my job to be concerned about. All I got to do is see what the word says, and if he did it for Mary, why can't he do it for me? If he did it for Mary, why can't he do it for you? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Maybe I'm, I'm trying to just talk to you this morning because there are things that he wants to send. And the Bible says Gabriel was sent by God to a city. There are angels assigned to cities. And there are principalities assigned to cities. And until you get a bigger dimension of who God is, God wants to send a message to a city near you. And that city is very, wherever you are, wherever you occupy, God is sending a message to cities. He's not just sending a message to cities, but he's sending a message to nations. God is speaking. Hello? Somebody say, God is speaking. God is speaking now, and he's speaking right now, and he's speaking not just here, but he's speaking across this land. And the thing is, are you able, are you sensitive enough to hear what God is saying? God is speaking right now, and some people will miss it because you're too busy looking at me, but you got to be able to look at him. Anybody that is really focused, anybody that's seeking God, has their eyes on him, can hear what God is saying. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. And you got to understand this. I know this may not be just uh, your favorite Christmas message, but God wants to send something to your house. He wants to send something to your life. And he wants to send revival. He wants to send restoration. He wants to send reconciliation. Come on, God wants to restore something. There are some things that have been stolen from us, taken from us, robbed from us, snatched from us. Well, I ain't got time to be fighting with no devils and demons. I just need to get back in my rightful place as a son of God and get back into the reconciliation power of God and restoring me to my original intent. I was made to, and I was created to have dominion. I was made to rule in the reign. I was made to speak a thing and watch it be established. Well, a lot of us been praying and speaking a thing, but you don't know you've been speaking a mess because you don't know who you are. You don't know what you possess. And Mary didn't have a clue who she was. But he had to send an angel. He had to send a messenger. And I'm just, just here as a messenger today. You got to discover who you are in 2014. You got to know if you're a believer or not. You got to know if you're a Christian or not. You got to know if you're a son of God or son or daughter or not. You got to know who you are. You got to know your assignment. You got to know your purpose. You got to know your not just the title, but your assignment. If you're going to be an apostle, be an apostle. If you're going to be a prophet, be a prophet. If you're going to be an evangelist, be an evangelist. If you're going to be a pastor, be a pastor. If you're going to be a teacher, be a teacher. If you're going to be a pew member just sit down on the, on, the, on the chair and ride and die there was some lepers they were sitting in the place they say we can't just stand here we can't just sit here we gotta make some moves and anybody that's hearing the word of God is going to make some moves anybody can see the vision of God is going to make some moves but you gotta be looking for the messenger everybody say I'm looking for the messenger mm -hmm. and he sent them to Galilee named Nazareth y'all okay I just want to talk to you Verse 27, the Bible says, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. That's so, that's so important. He was, bestowed, he, was, he, was, he, he was betrothed to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. Why did he say the house of David? The house of worship. The house of praise. God is restoring the house of David. God is restoring the tabernacle of David. God is restoring a people that will worship him and worship him in spirit and in truth. Why, why the house of David? Because God is looking for worshipers in this day. See, this was very important. This uh, Joseph was a part of a lineage of worship. He was a part of worship. And worship is how you're going to get God's attention. And I'm going to tell you, if you don't worship Personally, you will never relate corporately where we're going. And I'm saying as a body, because it's no longer just gathering on Sunday. Worship is no longer limited to Sunday morning. Worship is right there in your house when you need to experience the fullness of God and see it. You know why you can't even see God as being supernatural? Because you can't even worship him as a supernatural God. Because most of us like to worship things that we can see, things that we can touch. A lot of us got so many gods before us that we can touch, that we can see. Matter of fact, so many golden calves are in our way, we never can even experience the house of David. And so what we do, we stand like David's wife and we look from the window and say, you fool. When other people 
I'm not getting their praise on, but worshiping a true and living God. If you're going to get anything out of God's life in this next season of your life, I'm not talking about gifts and toys and all of this material stuff, but I'm talking about the fullness of God, the fullness of the Almighty. I'm talking about everything that he wants to release. God is releasing something, and he's not releasing it on an individual. He's not releasing it on a title. He's not even releasing it on a, a world-renowned house. Has nothing to do with how big your service, your facility is. It's all about the heart. It's about you understanding. The heart of a worshiper is what's getting God's attention. The heart of a worshiper is what's going to get God to move supernaturally in their life. And so here you got a man. He was connected to the house of David. Everybody say the house of David. See, the house of David wanted the presence of God. The house of David got the ark back into the presence of God. The house of David knew what it was to build, to, uh, build an altar for God. When you, when, that's, that's, what, that's another thing. That's what we're going to have to do in this season. Learn how to build altars for God. Tear down your false altars. Tear down all of these altars that you've built up that you think you're getting God's attention. It's not in a song and it's a dance. It's from the purity of your heart. Building altars. How do you build an altar? You build an altar by fasting and praying. I only got a few hallelujahs on that. Maybe I'll, that was only one, huh? You build an altar. How do you get back? How do you even get into understanding the house of David? You begin to build an altar by fasting and praying. This year, we're not putting a demand on a 21-day fast, 40-day fast. We're going to fast for three days, the 8th, the 9th, and the 10th. It was on the calendar before we had the scheduled meeting, and so that's our days that we're going to fast, and God knew what we needed before we even got the opportunity to host but we know that those three days is all we need everything is called the fast january 8th 9th and 10th your your children your 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 dog your cat everything whatever you got everything must fast because that is how we're going to build a new altar of worship to god and not a man-made altar but an altar that will be pure an altar that will be holy an altar that would say, this house is a house of prayer. He said, my house should be a house of prayer. Well, you can't build a house of prayer. You can't build a house of prayer unless you got an altar of prayer. And I'm not talking about coming kneeling, but I'm talking about pressing in and persevering into a place of prayer that you can't just lay there for 10 minutes, but you getting in all the way in, all the way in. Y'all know what I mean? What about all the way in? I'm talking about until you hear from God so clear that nothing would distract you, nothing would keep you from re retaining what God wants to release in your life. Am I making any sense? Okay, help me then. The virgin was betrothed to a man. She was given to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel, having come in, the angel said to her, rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. Everybody say rejoice. Rejoice. You can say the word rejoice so much to eventually you will laugh yourself till you get a headache. And the problem is we've been so frustrated. We've been so beat down. Come on. I said we. <laughs> I could say me personally, but then some of y'all won't relate. So I'll just say we. We've been so broke down, busted, and disgusted. This is a word that when I read this, I said, wow, how, how much do we miss this? When you can say rejoice so much that you will bring yourself to a holy laughter. Rejoice is the key. You got to rejoice in all things. You got to rejoice in everything. You got to rejoice in trials and tribulations. You got to rejoice in loss and gains. You got to rejoice when the good times and the bad times come. As much as you do this, you must rejoice. This is a season that you got to laugh at er everything that seems like it's impossible. Everything that seems like it's not going to be complete, you got to laugh at it. Everything that it seems like it's falling apart, you got to laugh at it. When you get ready to argue with your spouse, somebody got to get a rejoicing spirit and say, ha! <laughs> devil I'm not going to let you come in this way but I'm going to laugh this situation out that way and you got to understand rejoicing is what you what are you, what are you rejoicing in you're rejoicing that you have a God that has a message for you and that he has a purpose for you and that he wants to release something in your life that is more than just tangible but it's spiritual because there are blessings that he wants to release in the heavenly places there are heavenly blessings that he wants to release to you go back to Ephesians chapter 3 and you can see what I'm talking about. There are heavenly blessings that he wants to release, not in my life, but in everyone's life that understands that God has something for them. Everybody said, there's something for me. 
And it's more than a gift, but it's a blessing, a heavenly blessing. There is something, there is a benefit that God wants to release that you can't even contain in your knowing. Because your peanut mind only uses 5% of your brain. And God says, I got something that's going to blow your mind away. God wants to blow you away in this season and he want to blow you away strong. Because if he can blow you away, you can get your flesh out of the way. You can get your reasoning out of the way. You can get your thinking out of the way. You can get your knowledge out of the way. I don't care how many degrees grease you got God is in a season where he's releasing revelation he's releasing insight that people can't even understand what you're going to even look like in days to come because what God wants to release in your life God is blowing minds away and he's blowing it away rapidly because everything that you thought was strong and mighty God says I'm shaking that I'm shaking your government I'm shaking your churches I'm shaking your business I'm shaking your money because I want to bring you into the fullness of who I am and you will never know who I am as long as you got yourself in in the way this is good i'm trying to try not to i don't want to preach i don't want to rejoice i want to be happy i want to smile i want to have the joy of the lord which is my strength when you understand the word rejoice he was standing before mary and said mary i got some good news for you baby you're about to give birth to something you ain't gonna go through the struggle that was put upon eve eve had to go through some pressure eve had to go through some hurt but girl you finna birth something that's gonna be ease in your life and you got a word that's inside of you and you have yet to even know so you just gotta be happy about it he didn't come to say i got bad news you're going to be pregnant and they're going to talk about you. They're going to say, yeah, you've been sleeping with Joseph and y'all ain't even been married yet. How are you going to have something from Joseph and you ain't been married? Don't you know, and it's just like us, that's just like the church. There are people that are talking about you. There are people that are saying it's impossible for God to do it in your life. And that's why the angel is coming and he's saying, you better rejoice. You better act like you just had a $55 million lottery ticket that cashed in. And there's the joy that's coming and saying, I ain't got to stand in the line and scratch a ticket and pay for a ticket. All I got to do is rejoice. And God will release everything in my life that I can even explain why I got it you want it if you want it then you got to be able to rejoice you can't come in with this sour look on your face looking like God is taking you through something if he's taking you through something he's taking you so he can get the glory when he brings you out of something because when you come out you'll know how to rejoice I want to stay on the ground rejoice sometimes you just gotta laugh <laughs> Ben you want to win a national championship <laughs> You just got to begin to laugh. You got to laugh like it's going out of style. (laughs) Because when you laugh, you put yourself in a position of sitting in heavenly places. Then you see from God's perspective. And then you look at that thing when the enemy don't even have a clue. The enemy don't even know what's going down, what's going on around you. Because the enemy says, wait a minute, you don't see me. But God says, wait a minute, look, there are more for me than those that are against me. So I'm going to rejoice because I got peripheral vision on. And I can see like never... I've never seen before and because I can see I'm going to rejoice and you can't rejoice just sitting in a chair you can't rejoice just talking about God is good hallelujah you got to get crazy and rejoice when you lose yourself for the sake of what you're about to give birth to I can see Mary right now talking about what an angel when you rejoice you hear bad news and you laugh Every time you hear bad news, every time you see bad news, every time something is going wrong with your children, just get a rejoice in your spirit and watch the spirit of God move and shift immediately and suddenly. Things are held up in your life because you're consumed to what is your reality. And God said, be ye transformed and be renewed by your mind and get your mind down and let God be raised in your life and God will bring you into your purpose and destiny. Don't be conformed to your situation. Don't be conform to your sickness don't be conform to your money rejoice in a super listen the word is superimpose what you really see and so God wants to raise you up God wants to break loose in your life but you got to get a revelation of rejoicing that's a good word right there because how can you be in a season and worry about what's going on around you and you don't even know the key that the key is rejoicing 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 I'm talking about every day of your life finding a laughter in your belly your belly will get rid of that also your belly will get rid of that sickness if you get rejoicing in him high blood pressure 
<laughs> I take my blood pressure, and when it's high, I look at it, and I laugh. And I say, <laughs> you coming down today. God said, I take the foolish things to confine the wise, because you got to know the revelation and rejoicing. Rejoicing is the key, church. It's the word of God. It's the dimension that God wants to take us to. Oh, God. Shanda Bosa. God wants to rejoice in knowing that you rejoice. That's the word. Tweet that. God wants to rejoice in knowing that you want to rejoice. See, God is about bringing good things. He says, I have an expected end. I have thoughts that I think towards you. It's Jeremiah 29, 11. I want to give you an expected end. I want to give you hope. That's something to rejoice about. I don't care how you thought you were going to finish this year, but you got to finish this year with a laughter in your belly. You got to finish this year stronger than ever before because the enemy thought he was going to take you out. The enemy thought he was going to kill you. The enemy thought you was done. He told you to give up. Just forget it. Leave the wife. Leave the kids. Leave the family leave everything and rejoice but God says wait a minute your rejoice gonna keep you rooted and planted in me your rejoicing is gonna say wait a minute weeping may endure for a night but joy comes in the morning it might be raining in the morning but I got a joy unspeakable joy I got a joy that's gonna cause me to sin I know Ron Kelly said I believe I can fly but when I get joy I mount up with wings as eagles not just an eagle but a war eagle come on somebody I'm talking about a war eagle that got an eye like a whoop, like a serpent and it will strike at any given moment because I got the understanding the rejoicing because the joy of the Lord is my strength. If you want to work out this year, let this New Year's resolution be your word right here. I'm going to work this thing out and I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to get in the gym and rejoice. Him. Get up in the morning before you pray, before you read your word. Just laugh. Your breath might stink, but say... <laughs> <laughs> Watch your situation change. Watch how you feel. Stop saying you're tired. What you speak, if you speak a thing, is going to be established. When you begin to rejoice and rejoice in the presence and the power of God in your life, you can give birth to the impossible. Chicago Sata. The Bible says, rejoice. And he said, highly favored. Everybody say highly favored. When you understand highly favored, that's again, you're seated in heavenly places. You're not seating here from the earth perspective. You're seated from a heavenly perspective. And if you're going to walk kingdom, if you want the kingdom of God to manifest in your life, if you want to experience the kingdom of God, then you got to know that you're highly favored. That means you're seated in seats that even President Obama can't sit in. There's, you're seated in seats that, yes, you might not have the degree. You might not have the paperwork on the wall but God says when you know who I am and you know who you are in me then you can become like me and I'll cause you to rise above your situation and you just won't be favored but you'll be highly favored I'm talking about straight up vertical highly favored I'm talking about favor that just just is crazy and that's what we need in this day this ministry was established on high favor and every day we live we got to live by high favor but when you get highly favored you will sit in seats that you didn't RSVP for. You will fly in private jets that you can't even pay the fuel bill for. You will drive cars that you ain't paid for in a day. And I'm not talking about so you can get a repo in 30 days, but I'm talking about paid for in cash. And whether it's a new car or old car, when you understand there are, God, there are things that God, how can, th these are the people that are highly favored. That's why the word says, the last shall be first and the first shall be last. There's a shifting in the position, especially in the body of Christ. God is bringing people from the back. God is bringing people with no titles. God is bringing people who ain't never been to the theological seminary. God is bringing some people who can't isogee, 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 then try to exogee. God ain't bringing people who can hoop and holler. God is bringing the outcast. God is bringing the broken, the downtrodden. God is using people that believe God for the impossible because they see more of the supernatural power of God in the street than they seen in the church. And so God is bringing people to a high position of favor nothing that man can anoint and appoint but only God can choose many are called but few are chosen are you amongst the highly, highly favored chosen of God God wants to see you as his highly favored God wants to select you God wants to love on you but a lot of us think it's just for the pastor hallelujah yeah just for the man of God yeah right it's as much on my grandson than it is on me it's as much as on your children than it is on me. 
It's as much on the, on, on the person that don't look like they got it together than it is on me. And so God wants, to, wants you to be highly favored. Everybody say, I'm highly favored. I just want to talk. I just want to talk. I'm trying to finish so I can talk. He said, the highly favored one. Then he says, the Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. He says, celebrate because you're highly favored and the Lord is with you. When the Lord is with you, he is the almighty. When the Lord is with you, when the almighty is with you, no matter where you go, there's nothing that can stop you. That means you become an atmosphere changer. You become an atmosphere shifter when the Lord is with you. There are some people you brought the presence of the Lord here with you. The presence of the Lord was already here. But when the Lord is with you, no matter where you go, he will never leave you nor forsake you. And there are some Peters that's going to have to step out, out of the boat. Step out of the comfort zone. Step out of what you know about God and begin to trust God because he's with you. You know why you ain't seeing nobody come out of the hospital healed and set free and, and delivered? Because ain't nobody bold enough to step out there and walk into the hospital and walk into the cancer ward and say, I pray in the name of Jesus that you be healed. And you ain't got to touch nobody. But if the Lord is with you, he's not going in the hospital. The greatest evangelistic field is in the hospital. If you want to know if you really operate in the signs, wonders, and miracles of God, walk in the hospital. Walk in the hospital and just begin to wave your hand. And then come back another day. Come on, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. I mean, you got to be able to do some bold type of stuff that don't make sense. What I'm doing, I'm tearing down your mindset of what God can do and who he can use. God can use you any moment. God can use you if you just stop and pray for your neighbor. If God can use you, you just stop and pray for somebody and watch how somebody's situation change. But the problem is we don't know who we are. We don't know that we're favored of God. We don't even know what the favor of God looks like. We think the favor of God is how much, how, how much money you got. How big your house is. It's not the favor of God. That's a blessing. And you don't know what somebody, what the price somebody paid for that blessing. But there's no price for favor. There's a favor factor that God has. And it starts with rejoicing. Why would God give somebody favor who is always complaining? We complain and we mumble and we grumble and we talk about it, we backstab. We do so much. Come on, we do it in the church. We do it, you looking at me funny. We talk about people like it's nothing. And then God is saying, you want to be highly favored? Highly favored are people that know how to shut their mouth and watch God move. I'm just talking to myself. Maybe that's, maybe he's talking to me. Uh, God, God, amen, God, amen. He says, the Lord is with you. Everybody say he's with me. Everybody say, the Lord is with me. If you just read that and say that enough, you will begin to actually believe that. And a lot of us don't believe that. I, I could do a poll. Most of us, the way we talk, you don't talk like the Lord is with you. And if he's with you, why wouldn't you walk into everything that he has desired for you? It's a simple word. The Lord is with you. And a lot of us, we only want to take him to church. We don't want to go into the fullness with him. We only, we only want the Lord with us when we benefit. And the benefits of God, that he has no respect to person. He reigns on the just as well as the unjust. But a lot of us don't want to go all the way. A lot of us don't want to press in. You know what I'm finding out? There are a lot of people don't want to pay the price. How much suffering are you willing to do? What are you willing to die for? We look at images on Facebook where people are burned up and they post those and they say, you know, we can't relate. But how many of us really are ready to die for the sake of Jesus Christ? How many of us are really, really, really ready to go to the cross? We talk about the cross, at the cross, at the cross. But there's a price to be paid in this season. To have the highly favor of God. To have God with you. Because there are a lot of people think God is with them. And Ichabod is all on their t-shirt. The, it's on their car. God is my co-pilot. I said, Ichabod. God ain't a co-pilot. Matter of fact, God ain't even a pilot. I don't even see that as one of his identities in the Bible. I don't even see that as his name. But we like to limit God to a pilot. <laughs> The man upstairs. 
my buddy. Let me keep moving right here. Everybody say the Lord is with me. He's in your house. He's in your car. He's in your children. He's with you. And he's waiting for you to just, just believe that he has angels that are ready to move on your behalf. He's with you. He's with you. When you think you're all alone, if you're single, God is with you. And when he's with you, if God be for you, who could be against you? There's nothing that can come against us in this season. There's nothing that could come against you in your house in this season. Because he's with you. He's in your house. But you got to acknowledge him. You got to trust him. You got to seek him. If you don't seek him in this season, you will never know the fullness of God that's in your life. A lot of us are seeking. Come on. TV. Thursday night. I'm, I'm going to mess with you because I'm going to stay right there. But you know you're spiritually mature when you can shut it off and seek the Lord. I know what I'm talking about. I had to watch the heat every game, every game, every game, every game. I had to watch sports. I got nothing. Everybody might not be there, but come on. I had it so bad. I had to see it. I had to see it. I said, do you really want to see me move? I'm just saying for me. I'm just sharing for me. You might not be ready. But there are some things that we got to cut loose. If you don't let Lot go, you will never walk into the promises, Abraham. Let Lot go. Leave Lot behind and take the Lord with you. Let the Lord be your guide. Let the Lord lead you and direct you. The Lord is speaking to somebody. God wants to be your lead. He wants to be your first thing. Seek ye first. If you don't seek him first, how are you ever going to know that he's with you? When you're seeking everything else first, I said it last week. When you put this other stuff before God, you will never know the fullness of him that is with you. But the price that we got to pray. Oh, man, there's a price. You got to pray and you got to fast. You got to pray and you got to fast. You got to pray. If you got to pray three hours, six hours, 12 hours, 24 hours, three days, you got to pray and you got to fast. I can't say it enough. This is a word that people don't like, especially not before Christmas. This ain't a Christmas message preach. I ain't preaching no Christmas message because Jesus wasn't born on the 25th. Pray and fast. Pray and fast. Seek the first. Seek the Lord. Seek the Lord. Seek the Lord. How do you seek the Lord? Pray and fast. Pray and fast. Stop. Just stop talking. Stop calling. Stop texting. Seek the Lord. Seek the Lord. I can't say it no other way. 2014, just start now. Just start. If you're seeking one meal, just, just cut it off. Say, God, I don't want no meals today. If you're seeking three meals, just cut it off. I don't want three meals. Whatever you like to seek. Some of us like five meals a day. And a snack. Seek the Lord. Am I saying anything? Because you're going to see this type of blessing come in your life. He said, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Oh, that's a good word. Blessed are you among women. Blessed are you among women. I mean, it's so, so precious when God can do it. I'm going to move for the sake of time. Verse 29. But when she saw him, when she saw the angel, she was troubled at his saying. She, she couldn't understand it. And consider what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And a lot of us don't even have a clue that we have found favor with God. You know why you didn't die in a car accident? Because of the favor that you have with God. And the type of favor I'm talking about is generational favor. Favor that you don't even understand. My grandma been praying some stuff for me long before I was born. I'm still understanding. Now I'm walking into that. And she going on the glory. Come on. I'm, now you understand what I'm saying? When you understand the blessings of God, it follows you generational. Your children don't even have a clue of what they're coming into. My grandson don't even have a clue when I make him stay with me for 12, 14 hours. And we at the church 10 of those hours. Because there is a blessing coming on his children he don't even have a clue of and that's the type of blessing I'm talking about I'm not talking about temporary blessing I'm talking about blessings that's going to blow your mind that you say wow I didn't know it was like this I didn't know it was going to happen like this are y'all awake nudge, nudge somebody and say wake up I'm going to give somebody the mic your eyes rolling <laughs> let me finish the angel said to her do not be afraid don't be afraid Fear is not an option. This fear is false evidence appearing real. Don't be afraid. And he said in verse 31, and behold, you will conceive in your womb. This is the supernatural thing right here I love. You will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son. 
you'll bring forth. There are some things that you've conceived in 2013. It is time to bring it forth. There are some things that God has, has revealed to you and it's right there uh, uh, sitting and you, it is time to bring it forth. Bring it forth and when you bring something forth, that's not like you just showcase, but you manifest. The sons of God is time to manifest. The sons and daughters of God is time to manifest. When you bring forth what is coming out of your life, there is something coming out of your life and your bloodline that the world has yet to even comprehend. And, and she could not comprehend it. And anything that's too great for you is definitely the sign of the Almighty. Anything that's impossible for you is a sign that the Almighty must step in. Anything that you're carrying that's too much for you to bear is a sign that the Almighty has put it in you. I don't think y'all understand what I'm talking about. When you sit in that stage four cancer door, it's time for you to get this understanding. I'm going to conceive this healing, and now it's time for me to birth and bring this healing forth. Are y'all understand what I'm saying? When, it, when you are at the, the gate of impossibilities, you got to conceive it. You got to conceive it. You got to get it in your spirit. You can't get it in your mind because your mind will cause you to lose it. Your mind will cause you to stumble. Your mind will cause you to second guess. Your mind will cause you to doubt. What y'all, what are you doubting? What are you doubting? What are you doubting? Doubt, doubt is not of God. Doubt isn't even, isn't, isn't even in God's vocabulary. And when we begin to doubt, when we begin to second guess, it's some things I've already said, and I can smell doubt in the, in the air. Don't smell like the rose of Sharon. Smell bitter and sour. Smell stale. Smell like stale bread with mold on it. Fish don't even want what you got. Because of the doubt, the unbelief. And there are limitations that we're building up. But God says, I want you to conceive it. I want you to conceive it. When I receive Christ, you, you got more than just a, 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 a one-way ticket to heaven. But you got something inside of you that says, I'm going to conceive every impossibility in my life. They said I wouldn't make it. They said I'm going to lose it. I'm going to conceive it because I'm going to bring forth that I'm going to be the head and not the tail. You just can't quote the scripture. You got to manifest the scripture. And a lot of us are still walking around like tails and don't even know you're called to be a head position. Because you got to conceive it. And you can't be a CEO over nothing until you conceive it. You can't be a leader over nothing. You can't be prosperous over nothing. I'm preaching better than you're looking at me. But you got to conceive it. When I conceive what God is doing in my life, I'm saying, God, it's time to birth it forth. And I ain't got time to be waiting for 10 and 20 years. I need it now. I need everything called to my life now. If you're showing it to me, don't show me the promised land. And it calls me to walk 40 years in the wilderness. But show me the promised land and it say, go get it, baby. And when I see it, I want to see grapes as big as my head. I want to see milk and honey. I want to see everything flowing like I've never seen before. But I got to conceive it. When Mary said she was going to get a baby and didn't know how she was going to birth it and slept with a man, it went from here to here. And she said, oh, I can bring this thing forth because it caught in her spirit. That's why when, the, when, when Mary and Elizabeth got together, the babies leaped. Because of the spirit. See, when you get the spirit of the almighty inside of you, it'll cause your baby to leap. It'll cause your dream to manifest. It'll cause something to happen. I'm preaching better than you looking at me because I'm seeing some things that I could not conceive yesterday. I can show enough see it right now, pastor, because it's bigger than who I am. Because the almighty says, I'm going to cause you to give birth to something you won't have a clue. And it's going to blow your mind. Matter of fact, it's going to blow your eyes. And it's going to blow you out the box. Because some of us are sitting on the side line and we don't want to conceive the promises and the blessings of God we only want to receive them but when you conceive them you overcome every obstacle that he can't do it you overcome everything that's in your path that would hinder you you overcome everything of your past I don't care what your daddy was I don't care what your mama was I don't care what your money look like I don't care what your, uh, your credit score look like I don't care what you think you know God says Get a revelation of conceiving it, and I'll bring that thing forth, and it'll bust loose, and everybody will be saying, is that busting loose with Richard Pryor? They'll say, no, that's God. And did I go there? I'm sorry. That wasn't spirit. That was all flesh. 
But if you're going to bust loose, you better bust loose all the way. And you're going to bust loose and bring forth the presence and power of God like never before. But again, it starts with rejoicing. It starts with praying. It starts with fasting. It starts with seeking God. You got to begin to understand that there are angels bringing you something that's too big that only God can bring forth. And it's good. It's good. Everybody say bring it forth. Everybody say bring it forth. Turn to somebody and tell them to bring it forth. Turn to somebody and prophesy to them and say, bring it forth. Bring it forth. Bring it forth, man of God. Bring it forth. Bring it forth now. Don't bring it forth tomorrow. Don't bring it forth next week, but bring it forth. Just come on, come on, come on, bring it forth. Come on, come on, come on, bring it forth. Bring it forth. When you bring it forth, you're going to bring it forth and your water going to break. And the Bible says out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. And you're going to wet everything up around you. And then it's going to begin to grow. It's going to begin to prosper. And the leaf will never turn brown. Everything that came out of the garden manifested good fruit because of the rivers of the living water that will flow out of your bellies. When you bring it forth, you're going to bring forth your desires. Bring forth your business. Bring it forth. Bring it forth. Bring it forth. Oh, that's the word right there. Bring it forth. Bring it forth. And bring it forth passionately. The kingdom of God suffered violence. And the violence take it by force. You got to get violent. You got to bring it forth. You got to bring forth that power. You got to bring forth that word. You got a prophecy over your life. And you still wait. Bring it forth, Keisha. You got to bring that thing forth to the fullness. You got something happening in your life. And your children acting crazy. Just look at them and say, bring it forth. Bring it forth. You might be stupid today. But I'm going to bring forth the power of God. I'm going to bring forth the will of God. I'm going to bring forth the vision of God. I'm going to bring forth the destiny of God. I'm going to bring it forth. <laughs> you could be male or female. Bring it forth. Bring it forth. Bring it forth. But you got to conceive it. 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 Stop looking at your money. Stop looking at your bank. Conceive it. Conceive it. Conceive it. Can you conceive? Can you see it? Bring that thing forth. When you bring it forth, there are people not going to understand. Because God wants you to make you, a, make you a sign and a wonder. That's how signs and wonders manifest. When you bring forth a miracle, signs and wonders will follow you. Signs and wonders will overtake you. Signs and wonders will be your norm because you're bringing forth the power of God. You're bringing forth the will of God. God is causing people to bring forth stuff that the denominations and churches can't even have a clue how to maintain. There's revival that's going to bring forth in your life that you ain't even going to have a clue of how. What do I do? God just going to say, just let it go. Let it loose. Let it loose. Can you imagine? If she second guess who God was in her, then here come Elizabeth with John to confirm. Oop. There should be a confirmation what I'm saying. There should be a confirmation that God wants to bring something up out of you. That, that there's something been laying dormant. There are things, dreams, and visions been laying dormant. God said, I'm going to bring a confirmation to your life. I'm going to put you in unless two agreement. The law of agreement will activate miracles in your life. When two or more touch and agree, miracles will manifest in your life. The problem is, you don't want to agree because you're too scared. You're too skeptical. You're just second guessing God. You're reasoning how you're going to do it. But touch and agree and God will birth you a miracle. God will birth you the impossible. The Bible says in verse 28, and having come in, the angel said, rejoice, highly favored, blessed are you among women. And then he goes and seals it right here. I got to finish it. I got to finish it. Y'all slow down. He said, bring it forth. And then when you bring it forth, he'll tell you what to call it. He said, call it Jesus. See, God don't have you birth nothing that doesn't have identity. Too many of us been birthing bastard things that have nothing to do with God. Too many of us been birthing businesses that have nothing to do with God. Too many of us been birthing things that don't even have the true identity. Too many of us have birthed Ishmael's. And God said, that ain't the promise that I got for you. If you want to see the blessings of God, birth the purpose and promise of God that thing and when you birth it God says now I'm going to identify it I'm going to tell you what to call it and you call it what he says call it whatever God is telling you to call it it might be the branch it might be Georgia preparatory it might be divine uh, 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 whatever whatever uh, realtor I don't know it might be whatever it is but you got to get an understanding it might be uh, whatever it is my, whatever white 
what is it um, um, white incorporated in family or something I don't know you know uh, uh, the, the, the sumlin and sumlin you understand what I'm saying there's something that God when God births something he identifies it he gives it a name and then when he gives it a name the name takes it where it's supposed to go a lot of us are birthing things that don't have names that's why it can't go nowhere if you want something to grow then it's got to be able to go and a lot of us are birthing things that are going nowhere because God says, I didn't name that. You did. So God has to go and change our name. And because you named that thing Jacob, God says, I'm going to name that thing Israel. Because you named that thing a trickster, but I'm going to name that thing a king. I'm going to name that thing a ruler. I'm going to show you how I do it. God plays the name game that takes you all the way to the fame. We trying to birth names like B, and B don't have nothing to do with God. And God said, that ain't fame. Watch when I name a thing. You ain't got to work as hard, and you definitely ain't got to surprise nobody. I'm just, um, I got to finish this right here. I'm going too fast. Then he tells you what you're going to birth. He says, he will be a great. He will be great he will be great and that's something what you're going to bring forth is going to be great <laughs> oh that's a good thing I'm just so like that's why you can despise small beginnings but God said what you're going to bring forth by me is going to be great God don't birth no junk. God don't cause you to bring forth junk. Anything that you brought forth and it ended up being junk, you know it wasn't God. Because great lives a long time. Great is from everlasting to everlasting. Better yet, great goes from faith to faith. Better yet, faith, great goes from glory to glory. So anything that you birth or brought forth and it ain't great, Oh my, you better go back and check it again. Don't look at your children funny because you stunted them with not conceiving who they were. They, was, they crazy because you didn't know what you birthed. Then you gave them some name that God said, I ain't tell you to name them that. You can talk about our Jewish brothers, but they sure got it together because everything they name ends up being great. Then you want to know why they all are attorneys and all the doctors and all that. Then you want to talk about the Indian brothers and all that. But anything that they do is bound to be great. God wants you to birth something and bring it forth. Then he wants you to make sure that it's great. We're not just talking about just birthing a church. But we're talking about bringing forth something that's great. That's a good word. Because Jesus said, greater works shall you do. You can't do greater works. Those that know their God shall do. Daniel eleven thirty two. great exploits. Great works. Great things. We serve a great God. We don't serve a little God. We don't serve a petty God. And we worship in a God some of us don't even understand. The whole purpose of worship is so you can get into the revelation of that he's great. But you're trying to get into the revelation of how the band sounds. You're trying to get into the revelation of who's singing what song. But the whole thing is God wants you to see that I'm great. And if you see me great, I'll cause you to rise above that situation. And you'll give me glory. And then I'll begin to do something in your life you don't have understanding. But he says, they're great. He says, great. Then he says, i got to finish this. He said, and call the son of the highest. He will be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. He'll give him a seat. He'll give him a position. God will not only cause you to bring something forth and make it great, but he'll give it a position, a place. There's a place for you. There's a spot for your greatness. There's a spot for that thing that you bring forth. And everybody got to know that God will make room. Your gift will make room for you. It'll make room for you. And you ain't got to go around asking, can I be seated on the front row? Can I sit at the left hand or the right hand? Who's the greatest? Look, you ain't got time to be dealing with that. Do the do that you was called to do and then watch God move in your life and you'll be great. Uh, amen? I don't know if you got it. I got to finish this. And the Bible says, 
and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. I, I asked God, this is the New Testament, why didn't he say the house of Israel? <laughs> why, didn't, why, didn't he, why didn't he say I'll reign over the house of Israel? Because Jacob was his, his, his first name. Jacob was his first identity. Jacob was, was who he was in the beginning. And see, as Gentiles, you know, we all come in at the status of Jacob. We all come in like Jacob. And you know, and, 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 and the good thing is, I love this because, let me read it again. He says, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. This is how God thinks. God says, even the trickster, I'll reign over. Even the person that seemed like the deceptive, even the person that might be doing wrong, I'll still reign over them. I'm still God. I'm still the head. I'm still the bad. The people that's confused you, the people that's messed you over, the people that's hurt you, the people that deceive you, the people that backbite you, I'll still reign over their house. I don't know. I don't know if you understand that. I'm going to keep it. He says, and of his kingdom, there will be no end. No end. When you know that you birth what God has given you, it's got to be kingdom because anything that is kingdom will last forever. But when it's me, 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 when it's local, when it's only my, I'm the one, I, when it's all about me, kingdom lives forever. Kingdom is for eternity. We're not trying to birth uh, any work unless it's kingdom. Because we realize anything that is not kingdom will die. Revival in Brownsville will die. Eventually, it goes from being kingdom to me, it's got to die. God won't let anything continue if it's not kingdom. Because it's the kingdom of God that's going to last. It's the kingdom of God that's going to manifest. It's the kingdom. Everybody say the kingdom. What is the kingdom? Righteousness. Peace. <laughs> Joy in the Holy Ghost. What is the kingdom? Righteousness. That's the only thing that's going to keep you and that's going to last. If you don't do business in what? Righteousness. And joy in the Holy Ghost, it ain't going to last. If you don't pursue in marriage, righteousness, it ain't going to last. You can't even come to church. If you don't come to church in righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost, you ain't going to last. If you don't serve in ministry in righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost, it's not going to last. No matter what you do, if you don't have those three dimensions, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost, it's not going to last. It's not kingdom, it's yourself. That's why in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus was turning up garden juice. And that garden juice says, not my will, Lord, but your will. Let your will be done. I'm going to die right here so that I can die on the cross. And a lot of us got to get that revelation of dying right there in the garden. So you can live in the kingdom. Verse 37. As I close, I got to close this. I got to close it. For with God, nothing will be impossible. That's a good word. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Whatever you're facing, whatever you're dealing with, whatever you're thinking with. I done gave you so many things for 2014. You just take and choose and do whatever you think. But for with God, nothing will be impossible. What are you facing that's impossible right now in your life? Some of us just, I know some of us think we can give up. College person, if you're in college, y'all college people, you know, don't give up. Don't stop. For with God, nothing is impossible. You got a bachelor's degree. You got a master's degree. You got a doctor's degree. You got two masters. Whatever young people, don't stop. It's nothing is impossible. You can do it. You can finish it. Don't just stop with a bachelor's. Did you hear what I said? You got to get that master's. You got to do it. You got to finish it. Whatever it is in that marriage, in that situation, you got to keep pressing in. You got to say, God, for with you, nothing. With the almighty, nothing is impossible. Every time you face an impossibility, you need to say, almighty. <laughs> I can't take this no more okay wait a minute let me regain my thought grab that back almighty <laughs> with, 
With him, nothing is impossible. What is it? You need something to grow back? You need something off your body? You know? Cancer, nothing is impossible. Tumors, nothing is impossible. Bone problems, aches, nothing is impossible. Nothing. I'm telling you, until we see it, until we stand at the altar and see a leg grow out, blinded eyes open, I guess you're not going to believe that nothing is impossible. See, I'm living in a day and age that I got to see it, and I don't need no miracle crusade in no white, white suit with no suede hair to say God is doing miracles. All I got to do is believe in the impossible. All I got to do is see somebody. See, when you begin to want the impossible out of God, you see people in the street, and you say, God, I want to go lay hands on them. I want to go pray, and I want to see you do the impossible, because if I can see you do a miracle out here in the street, I know it's nothing impossible for my life. See, the problem is we try to go to a show and we want to stand in there and think that God is going to do great things. God want to do it right in your neighborhood. God want to do it right in your family. God want to do it in your house. God want to do it outside of your house. God want to do it in the school. God wants you to stand over somebody that's turning blue black and say, in the name of Jesus, I cause you to arise. Silver and gold I don't have, but such as I have, I give them to you. And God wants you to dream and think the impossible. But a lot of us got fear factor. A lot of us say, I don't have the anointing. A lot of us say, I can't do it. God is going to put you in a situation where you can't do it. If you about to your last meal, you go and make your last little cornbread jiffy mix, and you watch God fill your cupboard, God wants to make your cupboard full. God wants to make your gas full. You ride no E, speak to that tank and watch God do the impossible. It might sound stupid, but I'm stupid enough to trust God. If you can't trust him with fume in your car, what can you trust him with? I don't know if you've been in that situation, but you say, God, two more miles. God, five more miles. God, ten more miles. And if he can put gas in your car, you can say what you want. But I've been there, done that, and we'll continue to trust God for the impossible. God, I know they're about to cut my lights off, but you know, God, I'm believing you for the impossible. Pastor, I want to bless you. Oh, bless the Lord. This is my light bill. You don't even have a clue. You just paid my light bill, but let the Lord use you. You got to believe God for the impossible like never before. If your child seems like they're going crazy. <laughs> I just, just, I just see different stuff. <laughs> I don't know. I see different stuff. Yes, I do, Jesus. I see different stuff. I don't even speak. I don't even speak no more. I don't even be declaring. You're going to preach and all that. I say, God, I just see it. I'm believing you for the impossible. What seems like is impossible, God, I know it's already done. If I'm on my deathbed, it's already done. God, if I ain't here, it's already done. Somebody got to believe God for the impossible. If you don't do nothing else, bring it forth and believe it for the impossible. Bring it forth. If he gave it to you, you're going to keep it. God ain't going to give you nothing. He's going to just take away. God is going to bring you something that's going to last to, this, to the everlasting and everlasting. God is going to give it to you. But you got to believe for the impossible. Oh, kaboshe. God, God say, God, I want you to believe. Come on, y'all got to just believe like never before. God wants you to believe like never before. Come on, stand and raise your hands. Come on, we're going to close. I got to close.